everyone and happy Wednesday. Today I'm going to be working on a geologic abstract and when I'm done creating most of the work I'm going to use my ruling pen to create some ki kintsugi <laughs> inspired lines using some bronze. I'm really excited with the results of this painting and I hope you're going to enjoy watching this process. If you feel like painting along with me, I would love for you to join me. And if you just feel like having a relaxing time, then grab yourself a cup of your favorite hot beverage, sit down and enjoy. Let's get going. I'll start today's painting project in much of the same way as I normally start most of my watercolor painting processes. I love to start by creating a light wash of color and in this case since I know I want to be working mostly with neutral colors I've decided to start my painting process with raw sienna. Any neutral would do but I do want to remind you uh, you don't have to jot down all the supplies that I'll be using as I name them uh, and sometimes I even don't name them <laughs> when I'm talking in my video. Um, this is because I always put a list of my supplies down in the video description and I'd like to invite you to have a look at that video description because you might find most of the information you're looking for in there. Sometimes, however, I do forget to mention an item and, um, you know, this happens. If that does happen, please do not hesitate to reach out to me and ask. I'll be more than happy to make the addition in my video description and let you know what it is I used. But for the most part, I like to encourage people to use what they already have on hand. And so any neutral colors you have on hand would be really good for this painting process. I'm starting by working in wet on wet. <laughs> so I created a wash of color and then before that wash of color was dry, I came in with some more color and I'm working very imprecisely using my big, my biggest watercolor brush, which is my mop brush. So there's no precision painting here. It's all about just dropping color on the paper and kind of feeling your way through it and that's what I'm doing I'm feeling my way through it I'm adding color sometimes if I feel like the color is a little bit too intense I'm picking it up with my mop, my mop brush and I'm moving it around but there really is no right or wrong way to do this at this point you're just working on creating a base of color for the rest of your per your painting to emerge from Because I want to work slightly more precisely by adding some dark lines into um, the background of my painting, I've changed my brush to a smaller brush at this point and I'm coming in directly with paint from the paint pan itself and I'm darkening some of the lines. I said I wanted to create a geologic abstract and so I'm working with that idea in mind. I don't have a reference photo or anything, I'm just sort of imagining what I want my painting to look like and I'm building it up as I go along using my intuition. Um, so it's again about just drawing some lines here. There's no other intent than to darken some of the values in my painting and to create some darker lines maybe uh, representing a crack in the ground or a darker area in the ground where uh, rocks could be emerging from.
I'm feeling content with what I've got so far, so at this point I'll add some fine grain table salt to the damp paper, and then I'll move on to the next phase. Once my paper was dry, I scraped the salt off the paper using one of my old um, bank cards. And now I'm coming in and I'm spritzing some areas of the painting where the dark lines are because I want to add some more paint. I don't want the whole entire paper to be wet, which is why I decided to come in with my spray bottle instead of a paintbrush. And I only spritz the areas where I wanted to add some paint. And what this is going to do is it's going to help the paint that I'm adding to spread a little bit, but it's not going to go all over the, the background of the painting. Once I'm done adding this light wash of color over um, all of the areas of the painting that are left around the darker lines, I'm going to come in and add some fine grain table salt to those areas. And once I'm done with that, then I'm going to come back in with some coarse grain salt and I'm going to add that on top of my darker lines. When I work with coarse grain um, salt, I always like to come in and drop some more color in between the grains of salt because they react really well to these bigger grains of salt and create interesting marks. And I find that the marks are even more interesting when I drop more color in. So that's what I'm in the process of doing right now. Once I'm done with that, I'll let everything dry and then move on to the next stage. At this stage, I'm happy with what I've created so far and I feel ready to move on to 
the next step. But before I do this, I always like to come in with a pencil, or generally like to come in with a pencil, to give myself some sort of guidelines to work with. I keep my pencil lines pretty light, and so they won't show once I'm done adding the paint. And if there are any lines in areas where I don't add any paint, I can always erase them because they were so light to begin with.
when working with the wet on wet method and blending colors if you're not feeling 100% confident that what is going to happen is what you want to happen I always suggest trying to start with lighter washes of color and then building up on your the color intensity by adding less water to your paint. With a light wash of color, if you're adding it to another color and you're not 100% sure what's going to happen, generally speaking, you should be good to go. When there's more pigment involved, that's when it can get a little bit more tricky. And so I generally love to build up my color layers bit by bit. I, I really do work with lighter washes and I build the layers up slowly. So I add a layer of color in a light wash, usually let that dry, and then I go over that layer once it's dry to add more color. And slowly but surely this intensifies my colors and I generally get the types of blends that I really want to get. But like anything else in life, it's, it's good to try things. If you're not 100% sure, the very best way to learn how something is going to work is to try it and to see for yourself how it is working out. Because sometimes I, you know, I do things my own way and I, I've been painting for a while, so... I have a certain level of comfort with what I'm doing and that has come for me through experimentation and so I really want to encourage you to not just stick with doing what I'm doing when I'm working on uh, these paintings but to also experiment and try different things as you're going along. I'm hoping that because you are doing your own thing that in itself is going to end up creating something new for you because we're all different. We all have different ways of moving our brushes and using our paints and picking our colors, etc. Um, so I'm hoping that something new will happen. It's, it's the best way to learn. It's to try and experiment and do different things. So yes, we can definitely learn by looking at what someone else is doing and trying to also do the same thing. That's definitely a good way to learn. But I honestly learn way more from the experiments <laughs> that I um, do because that's how I figure out what I really like and what I really don't like. And it also helps me figure out how my paints work, it helps me figure out how my different brushes work. So experimentation is extremely important and I hope you will give yourself a chance to do this.
I've decided to bring in some more coarse grain salt into my process. Normally at this point I would say most of, you know, my background is complete and I'm just adding colors to intensify the colors and I'm not so worried about the mark making. But I really love the marks that were left by the coarse grain salt in the center portion of my painting. And so I want to bring that out into the outskirts of my my stones, if you will. And so I've added some more coarse grain salt into these areas and I'm coming in with some different colors, uh, some darker colors to try and also create um, some of those marks on the outside. Again, it's all about experimenting and I hope that you'll give yourself a chance to give this a try. I like to add the salt and then add, like drop in some more uh, pigment and paint on top of the salt. And by doing this, it, it really does leave some interesting marks. Once it's all done, even though you don't see me doing this on video, usually I always let the layer dry and then I remove the salt, either using an old plastic card um, or something else to sort of scrape the salt off the paper before moving on to adding any other details.
At this point of my process, I want to come in with my fountain pen to start adding some more contours around my stones. And this, for me, especially with this color scheme, I think black is going to be the perfect uh, dark value to add around these rocks because it's going to really make um, my rocks or my stones stand out from the rest. A lot of what's around the rocks is very dark. I want it to have that um, neutral tint and the indigo and a little bit of the Payne's Gray in that area because I wanted the stones to really stand out from the rest of the painting and adding a dark value next to them really helps to do that. And now the black ink that I'm using to define my stones is also, it's also going to help them to stand out. So I've pulled out a piece of black paper and my ruling pen along with some bronze paint and I want to show you something I've discovered about using my ruling pen. And that is that my lines are generally very thin as long as I don't touch wet paint. <laughs> so I'm going to show you what I mean here. I drew in a square and then I put in a triangle and as I'm touching the edges of the wet paint with my ruling pen it's helping the watercolor that's in the ruling pen to flow more. <laughs> so sometimes when the ruling pen creates blobs of paint I think that's why it's happening because the ruling pen is touching another wet edge of paint and so that's making the paint it's like it's pulling almost the, the paint out of the pen. <laughs> I'm. This is just an assumption at this point, but from observation, from every time I have used my ruling pen, I've when I've had blobs of paint, it seems to happen when my the my ruling pen tip touches the edge of something that's all that's wet. Um, so I just kind of wanted to show you that you can prevent this by just simply either painting near an area that's already dry if you want to avoid having a blob um, or if you want to to pull in more paint just keep the area relatively wet and then you can use your ruling pen to sort of spread it all out but I love my ruling pen so happy I got it you can do so much with it and uh, maybe at some point you'll want to give it a try too. So I showed you all this because I'm at the point now in my process where I want to start drawing in my kintsugi and I want to use my ruling pen to do this and I've loaded it with some bronze paint and I'm going to start to create my lines. I've mentioned kintsugi in my first video that I created this year. Um, and I haven't mentioned it since, so in case you're not familiar with Kintsugi, it's basically the Japanese art of repairing broken objects 
um, using gold. And they use gold to draw attention to the breaks in the object rather than trying to make the breaks or the imperfections disappear. So I really, really love this concept. And I guess in this painting in particular, it's not really so much like Kintsugi in that, you know, um, I'm adding the bronze to the cracks in between my rocks. But for me, in some ways, this is very symbolic because the earth is in constant change. And as it's changing, it is sometimes breaking, it is um, continents are separating, volcanoes are erupting, all kinds of different things are happening to change our world and our planet. And all of it is natural and all of it is important for the evolution of the earth. And so I love the concept of Kintsugi and I wanted to bring it into this painting because we as people are also in constant evolution. We're constantly ch changing, we're constantly growing. And sometimes that growth can be uncomfortable, it can even be painful. Um, and it's not always easy to accept the changes that are happening with us. But they are natural and they have a place. And so I wanted to bring this concept back into another painting because I, I'm sort of in the process of changing myself. Um, not, it's happening. <laughs> I'm not making it happen, but it is happening. My body is changing, uh, my life is changing, and sometimes it's uncomfortable, and other times I can definitely say it's also painful. But there's a reason for it, and I'm trying to remind myself that there can be beauty and in the process, I guess. And so, Kintsugi reminds me of this and I wanted to bring it into my painting process today because even though something has changed, even though something may have broken it and may not work the same way it used to, it is still something to cherish and something to be grateful for and something to embrace. And I think, um, a little painting process like this reminds me of that and that's an important thing for me to be reminded of and maybe it is for you too. Kintsugi also reminds us of the old adage waste not want not. So even though an item is broken it doesn't mean we need to just throw it out and get something new. There's still probably a lot of value in that old item if we can just find a way to repair it and make it functional again. Every single time I remove tape from one of my paintings, I'm also reminded that it doesn't take a whole lot to make something look so much better. <laughs> and just removing that tape from the borders just made a huge difference. I love how this little painting turned out and I also love and appreciate the fact that it gave me a chance to contemplate the changes happening in my life and to look at them from a different perspective. How can the art of Kintsugi offer you a different perspective on things that may be happening in your life? Or is there maybe an old background? <laughs> watercolor background you didn't like that you might be able to pull out of your stash and give a little bit of new life to?
Thank you again for making the time to join me on my creative journey. I hope you have a wonderful week and happy creating!